that's kind of how Buster and Punch started. Actually, it was one one famous guy that brought a motorbike of mine and and came back to me and said, you know, can you make me some some cabinet pools? You know, little knobs that you have in your kitchen and and yep. you know, I thought it's a pretty boring request. So I said no, but later <laughs> on, I, I kind of like, what, what are you crazy? I don't want to make you. Yeah, cabinet what, pools. <laughs> think, you know, th- this guy was, you know, well, he was one of the Rolling Stones. I'll name drop. with the cousins what's up guys welcome back to another episode today we are talking to buster and punch founder massimo minale super passionate guy makes incredible product if you are not familiar with buster and punch as always their website and all their social links are in the show notes i could not more highly recommend checking out the stuff that these guys make everything is machined to perfection they're eye on detail is second to none it's a wide-ranging conversation massimo pulls no punches um it's no surprise that we are uh we are fast friends here uh really great conversation appreciate massimo's time we also used uh the buster and punch light fixtures um in an episode of the build-up so if you guys haven't checked out the build-up yet uh there is a link to the new series uh in the show notes as well so without further ado let's jump into it i think we found you massimo right when you started man yes. Um, I remember it was early days. I don't. I think. I think I came across you, or John came across you on Uncrate dot com. Uncrate, yes, yep. It was yeah, 2013. Because yeah, yeah. we found you before you were actually in the states. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we we um, we started. Well, I I started the company in late 2012. Um, you know, and we kind of been, uh, I suppose, just focused on a, a little part of the UK, and and we're only just starting to come to the states now. So. So we have like you know a small amount of product and, and right on. just trying to you know. Well, I remember because the feathers at the moment. The first care package you you sent our way, uh, the fixtures were still two twenty, and we were yeah. we. But you also sent us a bunch of of your light bulbs, which, if I'm being honest, like they are by far and away the best yes. LED Edison bulbs I've seen to date, hands down. Period. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That that's sweet of you guys. I mean that. Um, that I like to call it the bulb that almost killed us, but yeah, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> but it's good to hear that. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's quite daunting if you're a couple of greasy guys in a motorbike garage to try and uh, make an LED light bulb and take on you know the likes of Phillips and Cree. Um, so that, that that sort of David Goliath story. Luckily, we survived. And managed to launch the bowl, but it, it it did almost kill us. So man, oh man! It's, it's good to hear that you've got it and it's working. And yeah, yeah it's yeah, it uh, up the house. oh, it's my it's my <laughs> it's the bulb in my bedside light fixture. So I have that on every morning nice. and every evening, and it is. I I cannot even tell you the amount of times like if I have it on just as mood lighting, um, it kind of nice. my my nightstand uh, is at the top of my stairs in my loft, um, and then you have to pass that to go up to the roof deck. And anytime I have a party. Without fail, everybody who walks by it is like, "What is that bulb? How do I get one? Where is it? What what is it?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's nice. a it's it's an LED, but it's it's well done, uh, Edison." I hope you make love to it as well, <laughs> especially, especially as a bed. You know, it's a sexy bulb. Listen, man, we yeah. just met. I don't really feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and I I think Massimo, I think that's that's a perfect segue for our listeners too. I mean, of course, we have read your bio we see that of course you are an architect and you come from that background you're a designer you you love fashion and i would like to really understand how did the bulb almost bankrupt you guys like tell everybody describe the bulb a little bit so and anthony of course he always throws the links in he shows everyone yeah we'll have links to all your socials and the website and and all those goodies and all um i'll drop some photos right into the blog but, post but anthony well. wasn't over exaggerating cool. it really is and in my opinion too i think it is the best led bulb yeah. i have seen to date that, that, that's that's what you guys I'll, I'll, i mean i'll give you the uh i'll give you the long one right i'll give you the long story um like you said you know i used to be um 
Used to be an architect, you know, as a young man, I trained as the arch architect and, and worked for some of the large architecture practices in London, you know, working on huge buildings and, and kind of got a little bit frustrated with the whole process. You know, if you if you work for a large company and you're a designer, generally your your sort of ideas get filtered and filtered and filtered until they're not your ideas, right? And, Very true. And Very um, true. um you know, I sort of chucked all my frustrations into making motorbikes, which is kind of my second love. You know, I'm an architect, but I love making motorbikes. I've always been riding motorbikes from a really young age. Um, and, uh, yeah, I used to sort of by day be an architect by night. I used to make sort of crazy custom motorbikes. Um, and, uh, you know, I used to sort of fashion and machine all the parts of the bikes and, and manage to sell a few of my bikes to, to sort of interesting people and cool cats and, and I, I suppose after a while, you know, I, I sort of made not much money, but enough money that I could leave the day job and kind of throw all my efforts into. Initially, it was making motorbikes, actually. Um, and, you know, it wasn't it wasn't till um, later on down the road, I used to I started to get requests from some of the guys that, that bought, bought my motorbikes. And they sort of asked me to make crazy things from, you know, whiskey bars to light fittings um and that's kind of how buster and punch started actually it was one one famous guy that brought a motorbike of mine and and came back to me and said you know can you make me some some cabinet pools you know little knobs you have in your kitchen and and yep. you know i thought it's a pretty boring request so i said no what are you crazy i don't want to make you yeah, cabinet what, pools. <laughs> You know, th this guy was, you know, well, he, he was one of the Rolling Stones. I'll name drop. You know, oh! he's one of the most famous rock stars in the world. God. Whoa, who? Damn. Which know, one? Uh, are, are you allowed to say? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can. Uh, it was actually Mick, Mick Jagger. Whoa! So I've made a few bikes for the. I've, Holy I've, shit. I've made a few bikes for the Rolling Stones guys. Wow. You know, and he said, can you make me some little cabinet knobs? And I was just like, you know, no way. That's pretty, pretty crap. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And, and, and come on, up, you know, Massimo, like, you know you never say no to Mick. Come on. Come on. How do you no, say and, no, and, right? And, and to be honest, ended up, um, ended up, uh, you know, making some out of some old handlebars. And I remember, like, you know, soaking them in whiskey and doing some weird stuff just to <laughs> twist his melon. And, uh, and actually, you know, it was those small knobs that everyone started to talk about, you know, yep. press and magazines and other people wanted them. It wasn't the bike. So I think that's kind of where the company sort of originated. It was that kind of like um, realization when my, you know, love for architecture and bikes kind of collided in this weird little pair of knobs. And it was it was quite like a boring, strange that's object. A, uh... and, that's a phenomenal that story, is man. Insane. You know, <laughs> it's and insane. I, well, and you know, I mean, I, I know enough about the the custom motorcycle world, and I'm doing everything I can not to dive straight into motorcycles <laughs> because oh, okay. our design podcast will will go right down the, the motorcycle rabbit hole. Anthony um, is the fanatic, so he will he <laughs> okay, will cool. he will get into that a little later. <laughs> but but I but um, but but to the to the point of the knobs being the thing, you know. It's it's that barrier to entry, right? Like a custom bike, you're thirty grand, forty grand plus easily, and you know you take that same aesthetic, that same attention to detail, that same masculinity that your stuff has, and you translate that to a pull where everybody, quote unquote, everybody can afford it. Now you've given yeah. somebody a, a great piece of mechanical design for a kitchen drawer that that they can get their hands on, and that's re I mean, the stuff is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's exactly it. It's kind of like you know, it's it's accessibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, it, it it's not as much price point. It's kind of like, you know, we found our lane or a bunch of success in in taking like really ordinary, boring things. No one else is doing them. No one wants to do them. Um, no one's ever wanted them. You know, and kind of like reinvented them or injecting them with this kind of like you know the lifestyle that surrounds motorbikes and music, you know, that sort of excitement, but also the way that you make the stuff out of solid metals and, and machine it. And it's got a bit of grease on it. It shouldn't do, but, but I think that's kind of where, where Bust and Punch was kind of born with this, was this kind of like really boring stuff, actually boring type things, but it has this interesting lifestyle and, and excitement to it. So, you know, people start talking about it and one thing leads to another. 
and it is accessibility as well, you know. You, you know, it's funny you say boring things, and, and I and I think of the culture here in the U.S. and and what design television, specifically like HGTV, um, has done and how huge it is here. I mean, it is absolutely massive in the states. Yeah. I, I I know our show has has also aired in in the U.K. and it's been out there, but. Here, here in the states, everybody loves these type of shows, and we constantly get asked, "How do I make my space different? How do I make it unique?" And yeah, yeah, Anthony yeah. and I have always, we've always said, "There's, there's two things we always go to, especially inside the kitchen area. Um, of course, it goes to your, to your entire home, but we've always said lighting and cabinet poles. Those mm-hmm. have been areas where, like, yeah. you know, you want things that you can change up because, I mean, kitchen cabinets are kind of kitchen cabinets. Yes, there's different finishes." But a lot of people sometimes don't want to spend the money and they say, oh, I don't want to redo my whole kitchen. I want to do quick updates, things that are cool. And when you yeah. look at your hardware that you've done for doors, for kitchen hardware, they are super, super elegant. They're cool. They have that factor that it definitely has that that motorbike feel. Um, it's, got mm-hmm. that, it's got that machine process. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, and I know when people see it, they say, well, I've never seen this before. This is nothing like we see in the States. I mean, um, yeah, you know, you got, you guys are exactly right. You get it. It's like, you know, you know, people don't, uh, I, going back a few years when I was an architect, actually my speciality was interiors and within interiors, my speciality was to make stuff that cost 10 million quid, you know, but on a shoestring, you know, so it's that sort of idea of, of, when you are in that situation it's, and it's the same of what you guys do, you know, not everyone can afford Uber luxury stuff. Of not course. everyone um, has an AD home. And, and in fact, the majority of people don't. And, and the traditional interiors industry is actually really small. It's quite elitist. Yep. Um, you need to be able, able to afford, you know, an architect or a designer. And I think part of, of our success or what we try and do is try and talk to all those people don't pick up El Decor or AD Magazine, who, who don't like kitchens on Instagram, but like fashion and music and bikes, and try and get them excited in our world. You know, and in, in order to, to do that, you need accessibility. You need, you know, your HD TV shows. Yep. Um, you need exciting stories about motorbikes and celebrities <laughs> and things that kind of like... For sure. B- b- because we, we are talking about pretty boring fixtures you know so how do you like recreate a genre to get people excited about these things well, it, i think it, i think you know, you know sorry to butt in i'm on my i'm on my soapbox here do it <laughs> do it man but do it. Think, go think, for it you know just to like round up that little part i think that that we don't give enough weight to all those fixtures that we touch every single day you know that really sort of transmit the quality of 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 your your uh, renovation or whatever it might be yep. you know those really are the things that you have to start with put all your energy and probably your all your, your sort of money there to start with and then work back and things like fabrics and sofas all these things can be changed and they normally do get changed you know so it's really important going back to your point that, that i kind of 100 percent agree actually it's lighting and and those sort of functional fittings that you touch every day that really Correct. sort of transmit yep the mood and the quality of the space that it's well put together, you know, cause, cause everyone spends so much money on the, the walls, the stuff you don't see. So actually these parts are like the first bit that people touch to feel the quality of your space. So, so are super important and kind of, you know, we agree on that point. So yeah. There, I'm going to, I'm, my soapbox done. I'm going to need <laughs> to put a set of these handles on my double closet so I can rate, rate, race, uh, I can I can race my motorbike every time I go in to get it to get a shirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but then you, know, you, you got to change all your clothes to like leather leather fucking jock straps. That's or whatever, <laughs> you get into the whole motorbike. Right? You can't have you know you can't be you can't be opening the, the wardrobe with these lovely handles made from you know machine solid metal and just have like a oh, little like, sweater in there. You it's know you dynamite. need to have your your hell's angel vest in there. That's it. That's it, baby. <laughs> I, but I, I think you really touched on something super important, and, and it's the story. And and that's something that I that I talk to private clients about all the time, is that you know find pieces that have a story behind them or that mean something to you. You know, it's always, well, how do I layer my home? How do I you know get? How do I? What's good design? Good design is things that mean something to you 
or mm. by learning about a specific product that inherently has a story, a la the background of the motorcycles with with which you've you've found your your home niche. Um, I think is is super important, and once you can start to tell a story through the things in your home, it's good design to you. You've got to live there. It, it's never going to fit everybody's aesthetic, but as long as it fits yours and it's really good, um, mm-hmm. or sorry, it, that you're really happy with the, the selections you've made, it, it it really works. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think you know, in 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 this day and age, you know, everything's much quicker. Everyone's more fashion forward thinking. You know, if you do get your house renovated or, or put blood, sweat and tears into changing things, normally after like three years, you do want to change the sofa or the color of your walls or whatever it is, you know. So it kind of does revert back to the importance of, of those sort of functional, harder things to install, you know, that they are, you know, quality and you know, of, of good standing and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Well, I, I also, we I think, agree. And I think you touched, you know, you, you, how you said you were on, on your soapbox there uh, preaching, but just like you said, you know, when I get my architectural d- design magazine, majority, probably 99% of the things I can't afford in that magazine. I look at it. I like to get inspiration, but mm. it's way too expensive. And that is, like you said, majority of people, it doesn't matter if you're in the U.S., it doesn't matter if you're in the U.K., it doesn't matter mm. if you're in Italy, which is a, a design mecca. Majority of the people cannot afford to have these high-end, high-end finishes inside their home. So to see something yeah. that you are giving that is it, it's, it's economical, it looks beautiful, it brings something that is very unique, has the story, like Anthony said, because I think that is a, a great point. We want to have that story. We want people to walk into our home, and you and they when they walk up to a light fixture and they say, "Wow, I've never seen this before," and they start talking about your story and what your company has done. That is something special, and that's what makes their home really unique. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I think nowadays, you know, you kind of have um, you know a bunch of really established uh, interior magazines that love to cut stuff out and put stuff on white backgrounds. They're a bit dry, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yes. And then and then you have you know all your other other industries, fashion and music. They're so exciting. They're so forward thinking. You know, they talk to a much younger audience. Yep. And I think that's kind of what we're trying to do. Is kind of like bridge this space between interiors. You know, we've kind of chosen the the most ordinary type fittings that we think. Um, impact people's lives the most actually and they're kind of like forgotten and then we kind of like mix that with the most exciting subcultural lifestyle that we we've kind of lived as as, as guys you know the, yeah. the the garage where we we make motorbikes it's in the middle of east london you know it's it's in the heart of fashion in london and music in london and all of the customers that we make bikes for are uh, fashion designers or musicians or film stars or rock stars you know and it, and that's kind of like infiltrates into taking these really ordinary things and kind of like you know selling them or showing them to the public in the most exciting way so that we can get younger people into interiors we can get people that have never been interested or don't even own homes into this sort of world because it's super important i think that's probably something that that you guys do on TV is exactly the same thing. It's that sort of like access window for the the everyday man, the downtrodden, the young people to get into interiors, understand, you know, that that this isn't an elitist world. And actually there's a lot of pleasure in this as young people take from fashion or music. And I think it is changing. And we are in this sort of like exciting period of information whereby you know we're a young company we've got no cash we can't afford marketing <laughs> but we can be on podcasts with you guys yes we make crazy content we've um, you know uh, produced rap videos we've launched boots you know we do like a whole bunch of interesting challenging stuff which talks to all these people outside of interiors to kind of like get them under our wings and get them excited about our world you know and it's really important that 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 me and you guys do that, you know, to, to, yeah. to make sure that we are current and interesting. You know, you know, I think it, it's really interesting because you're making a great point, and to me, it's it's so funny how much of a disconnect there is between music, fashion, and interiors. Yet, 
interiors are just as much an expression of yourself as the former two you've mentioned. And for it to take as long as it has for this to really, for, for us to have to explain this to people and, and get mm. them excited about it, you know, it's your home is an expression and extension of you. So it's, it's should inherently be something like a fashion, like music. These are things that, that, that tell the outside world about yourself. You know, your home mm. does the same thing. The, the, uh, yeah, exactly. I think I think the problem is that we've sort of, uh, for you know, ever since I've been an architect, anyway, we've been drip fed. You know, houses that are immaculately finished. You know, there's no um, sort of insight into the struggle. Yeah, it's just that it museum. Yeah. Is, it's that museum yeah, bullshit exactly, yeah. instead of a, a true lived-in place. Exactly, and that's why you know the shows that you guys do are so interesting because it shows the pain, the heartache. You know, it shows sure that does. normal people can kind of like get involved and buy some paint and, and experiment. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I, I think we've just been as an industry just just way behind, you know, and I think it's time for for us to become relevant and interesting. And, and you know, there's plenty of fashion brands that kind of like have turned to home fixtures and fittings, but there's kind of like no home brands that have turned to fashion or music and have kind of like <laughs> flipped it on its head. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think it's an exciting time, and I think social media has added to that, and, and the accessibility of TV and all the shows that kind of uh, uh, speak to the people rather than to the elite, you know. So, For sure. Yeah. Kudos now, so to have, you guys as well. Thank so, you, Massimo, have we shared the photos with you yet from um, from from the build up for, for, of your light fixtures in in the apartment we did for the boys? <laughs> I've seen some, yeah, a long time ago, but I've seen some. I've seen some, yeah. How oh. did it all work out? Yeah, I mean, it's just incredible. The, the, these guys, Timothy and Malik, are just the best. They fell over when we walked them through the apartment. Um, and, you know, it's right. it's interesting um, because the other aspect that we haven't touched on yet and which is relevant to the show is that th a lot of people live in rentals. They don't own. Mm -hmm. And yep. they're very cognizant of not spending money that they can't get back in changing a space that they don't own. So, you yeah. know, we we couldn't do a ton in the kitchen, but what we did do was was three main things. One was your light fixtures uh, over the island um, and your light fixture over the dining table. The second was uh, a product called Stickwood, which we did as the entire back wall to add some texture to the space. And the third was a very large canvas mural that we laminated to the wall. Now, with the exception of the stick wood, the mural and your light fixtures can go with these guys to whatever apartment they move to next, to whatever home they may buy in the future. Yep. But it, it's – I'm trying to make the point that you can spend money on well-designed items – that you can then remove from the space and take with yeah. you. So you don't need to live in a shit place just because you don't own it. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and you know, it kind of like puts a spotlight on the importance of the quality and you've got to have a good connection to those pieces. And, you know, I think, I think for too long, you know, people have brought everything from like an Ikea and kind of like written it off and moved yeah. on or whatever it is. And, and I, th I think it is, it is really important to get younger people and millennials and people that might not own homes into what we do and kind of like, you know, um, get them excited about this stuff. Um, and and a, a massive portion of, of actually our followers are, are young people. They don't own homes. You know, when we first launched our light switch range in our, in our London store, we had turned up one day, block around, you know, queue around the block of, of pretty much all young people. And maybe, I don't know, 20% of them didn't even own homes and they were buying light switches. <laughs> That's you know, so and it cool. kind of That's like, great. You, you know, and those are the bits that go, that get you excited. Go, oh, we might be doing something right and this is really interesting. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree, you know. Yeah. But it's even even when you just say that, and I, I love your, your light fixtures as well. When you look at your light fixtures, they're totally unique. To think that there is a machined metal light fixture, again, who really has that inside their home? Most people are mm. just used to a, a white toggle switch that is made out of plastic, mm. and it looks really crappy. And you and and that's yeah. what they're accustomed to, and that's that's what's been ingrained in our culture, in our design, and everyone thinks, well, that's yeah. what everybody has, so I guess that's what I'll have. It's yeah. like, no, wait, you could have something yeah. that's totally unique 
to your space something that's fun, interesting, and when people come over, they're saying, "Oh, I've never seen that before." You know what? While we're while we're on the light switches, because um, I haven't played with them yet, are they? Do they fit in single gang boxes? Are they approved for use in the U.S.? Like, is it is it a, a pretty standard thing? Yeah. So we've got um, we've got our light fixtures. They're they're a little bit late, but they're gonna they're gonna hit the ground in the U.S. in in March, I believe. Um, we, we, we gave people a glimpse in New York last year, but they're going to hit the ground in March, you know, and they, 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 they fit all of your standard, uh, J boxes and, and insulation boxes. Um, they're all solid metal, you know, the, the, the actually the light switches and dimmers were inspired by, um, you know, guitar amps and, and parts of motorbike foot bags and stuff. So they're all sort <laughs> of made in the same way that a bang on trend made beautifully have an interesting story. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the last forgotten land, I suppose, in the interiors is, is <laughs> well, especially the light switch. Yes. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> Very true. They Very... are what they, yeah, yeah. You guys are, are crap with that. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, Mark, tell, Mark. Mark. tell us how you really feel. Man. <laughs> 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 Fucking crap. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, I love it. There you go. Oh, no, no, no. But, um, yeah, it, yeah. So, so we're just trying to, you know, take these ordinary things that have kind of like been forgotten and try and reinvent not just the way that they're made, but kind of like the way that you feel about them, you know, and the stories attached to them. And, and you know, people talk about our brand in, in dinner parties or when they meet friends, they don't see us in magazines, you know, and we kind of like that. And, and that's part of part of the great thing about having these sort of like ordinary things that don't have much competition is because it kind of like, you know, promotes that talking sure. about well, people. I, we found this brand, they and, do this, you know, it's, it's, it's good for us. And, and Mosma, I give you a, a lot of, a lot of credit to, st- to, to start this, this company out of, uh, you know, a, a vision and a passion that, that you've had. And, and now to be able to actually even start to come over to, to the U S and, and dip mm. your toe in this market this is mm-hmm. like you said. This is a big undertaking. <laughs> You're like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you said, you know, there's there 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 is no money yet because I mm-hmm. I understand, you know, Anthony and I we we're entrepreneurs. We we understand yeah. what it is to to launch businesses and how difficult mm-hmm. it is and the pains that that you have to go through. But your brand, I think, is definitely something that can catch on here in the U.S. and can really start. It, you know, becoming something that people know about and they say, Oh yeah, I, I did see that somewhere. You know, I've heard of that company Buster and punch because mm. these are very unique items. That, that's yeah. I mean, that's, that's sweet of you guys to say. I think, um, it, I think, it, you know, it's really hard for young designers starting up brands, you know, or even becoming interior designers or whatever it might be, but, but particularly getting into products and brands. Massimo, you know what they you, say, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but, you know, especially now, actually, you know, if, if we had started 10 years ago, I think we would have got there a lot quicker because, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Y- you could have a good product and, and it would get there. Or you well, there's just, there's just so much there. now. There's yeah. so much. Yeah, there's, there's so much. And you, you got to remember, you know, the, the big guys with the big marketing budgets, the big R&D budgets, they kind of rule. And, and if they notice any of the young guys doing something cool, they'll copy it, they'll replicate yep. it, they'll do it properly. They'll put it down their channels. And I think I think it is really hard for young guys. But we have like this little glimmer of, of hope actually now. And that is, you know, social media and the fact that you can kind of promote your story and authenticity just with a mobile phone, you know, and if people are into it, they're into it. You know, you don't have to spend money to, to, to get that sort of exposure. So that's great for us. And I think, um, yeah, I, I think, um, I, I think, oh man, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it sure what? is, bro. It, but no, you know what? It makes it true. It, it's true. It makes the and, rewards and that much sweeter them. when they come around. Yeah. It does. It's really tough and it takes loads of hours. And actually, you know, coming back to the light bulb story where we kind of started, you know, we, we, we kind of, when we started, we just made shit loads of stuff. You know, I don't know if I fucking swear, but I swore. We oh, make, yeah. we it's, make it's shit okay. loads of stuff. Right? Right, good. Yeah, watch your okay. fucking mouth, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, we're not business guys, you know, no one knows about accounting or supply chains and all this sorts of stuff. We're just makers like you guys, you know, work with our hands. And what we did is we just made 
a bunch of stuff, right? And, you know, one, at some point we could see that, you know, those filament bulbs were kind of like being phased out and LED was coming big. So we kind of like took on this project where we'd try and reinvent the light bulb, which sounds bonkers even saying it. <laughs> and, um, you know, and we had to like, you know, mortgage the house, you know, the amount of development you need to do to do something like a light bulb and bring it to market is, is unreal, you know? And we kind of, everyone was trying to do this. All the big boys, uh, Korea, Philips, everyone was trying to make the world's first designer LED light bulb. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, we, we beat them to it. You know, we launched it in Milan in 2015. Um, three guys in a garage, no one had any homes. No one could afford food. Well, we kind of like beat these guys. The problem is that you also need money to go and sell it, which we <laughs> yeah. just realized. Yes. So we made a great product, but we couldn't fucking make it or sell it. So we're finally now, you know, we're kind of selling a few things and, and getting a bit of money together so we can finally come to the States and, and, and say hello to you guys and sell these products. So, so it is a big thing for us actually to come to the States because always when we started this company, we've always felt that it's a very exciting and american brand actually you know we are we are a london brand but you guys love motorbikes you kind of like you know yeah i think there's uh, a there's a universal language there in the masculinity and the the handmade nature of of what you're doing i think it transcends a lot of borders and certainly the the ocean uh, on the stuff that you guys are doing yeah so exactly cool. and and you know, and, and it is hard for European and English companies to come to America because you need a whole bunch of certifications, mm -hmm. you know. God, the land of laws. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, land of laws. <laughs> That's a, you know, so it's land of laws but, and red um, tape. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> so, We're getting there. We're so, getting besi there. so besides the motorcycle that Mick bought, was he the inspiration hmm. for the Rockstar bar as well? <sighs> no, no. That was actually... Um, no, he wasn't. That was another request from a, a fashion designer. It who, is incredible. Who's no awesome. longer with us, called called Alexander McQueen, who's uh, oh wow, yeah, was a, 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 a cool guy, and um, yeah, I mean, yeah, every, all of our earlier products were all sort of like requests from people that we made, and we're like, that's cool, let's sell it, and and that's kind of how the start this company started. So it's been really organic, um, and now we kind of like we're, we're sort of obsessed with with trying to make products accessible and for the every man and, and get people excited about these kind of boring bits. You know, we've moved away from uber expensive things. So the whiskey bars are very expensive, high ticket luxury sure. item. And we are trying to, trying to sort of really nail down that accessibility because if you buy a light switch or a door handle, as you guys know, especially in your huge homes in America, you've got to buy like 10, 20, 30 of them. Oh, you know? yeah. So it can really add up <laughs> right. you know, if you start to go to go, go down the luxury, luxury route. So we kind of like really, it's really important for us that everyone can get into the brand somewhere, you know. And, and you know, part of, part of the stuff that we do that is quite different for the industry is we do a whole bunch of exciting stuff outside of product. You know, we don't like to just like sell product, sell product, sell product. You know, we do... Um, you know, we're the first first company to launch footwear at London Design Fashion Week. <laughs> um, you know, we uh, we do loads of like collaboration with bike builders and and, and music musicians, and we make all of the um, music awards in England for like the Brit Awards and stuff. Wow! And, you know, and one of our latest crazy things is we decided to launch Light Switch, is not the usual route, which is a magazine ad or a bit social we actually made a rap video with a really big rapper in england and we launched it on spotify um you know so we're kind of like trying to do these strange things outside of interiors to get people excited in interiors and the things we do and i think it's really important that, that especially the young guys that kind of aren't in the big system or aren't the man right to kind of like challenge the notion of interiors or you know why can't we make rap videos and make light switches at the same time you know, sounds bonkers. It is bonkers. It doesn't make any sort of <laughs> business sense. You know, and I've got like some money men that are, you know, sitting on me. But it's it's really important to to do that. You know, and even on social, we know that everyone wants to see beautiful kitchens or or the colour blue with brass. But you know, we 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 give them some robots, some cyborgs, some uh, all sorts of strange stuff. Just you do. A, I will just have a to, challenge. I, I love it. I want people. Like... Well, you know, John and I have said a lot, Massimo, that people don't always know what they like until they see it, and 
yeah. and showing people something they haven't seen before gives them the opportunity to realize something new that they may like. Yeah, and, and exactly. I, and I, I mean, I, well, I just want sorry, I want Karen. people I want people honestly they need to go to your Instagram page and follow you guys mm -hmm. because you're absolutely right. Some of the some of the uh, promotions, what you said, the, like the cyborgs and stuff. You guys have mm -hmm. <laughs> you have definitely pushed it. You've had some really yeah, really cool. No stuff. one like no one likes that stuff. You know? <laughs> we get like two likes, and then we do a kitchen and get like a million likes. But you know what's funny? It's, it's <laughs> well, you, you know what's funny when you did, and I did want to ask you when you did your renovation to your kitchen which i think came out mm. beautiful i had posted a picture of it because i always post in inspirational pictures of kitchens and design that that i i love to see around the world and i posted uh, a picture of your kitchen and people went crazy over it and they loved it mm. and i was curious as a designer as an architect did you go through did you know what you wanted or was it something that you kind of <laughs> were like back and forth with your wife like this is going to be a little difficult. I don't. I don't know if it's going to be as easy as I thought. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a really tough one when it's your home, especially if you're in interiors. Yes. Um, I think. I think. I think probably. Uh, no, nah, I knew exactly. You what knew what I you wanted. wanted. <laughs> yeah. the wife, the, honestly, the wife didn't get a say. I'm going to be really. Oh she got, like, holy shit! She got like, she got like the kids' room or something. Oh I feel boy. Bad about it. But actually, you know, now now we're sort of going back and and. You know, sort of changing things and, yeah. and putting a few. Actually, no, she did get. She got a decision on the the master bedroom wall color, which I said no, 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 no. And then we put it in, and it's the best part of the house. So ah, there, there you go, there, there you go. There's definitely a lesson in there somewhere. That's but, great. But you know, I, I think you guys are exactly right, especially with interiors. Actually, is is you know, fashion people they take risks. You yeah. know they try stupid things it's kind of like you don't have to spend too much money but i think with interiors people is quite reserved you know and they have to see it first on instagram or on the tv show to go oh you know green works and i like that i like That's that cool. yes yes you know and I, I think i think that that people should be a bit more like adventurous and try things because normally as long as you do stuff with conviction or as as, as long as you like put your heart into it it normally works out pretty well, actually. And I don't think, you know, the, my one thing that I really hate is like trend reports and you have to do this this so year and true. this is big this year. And I, and, and I think it's, you know, homes are for life. They're not just for Christmas. As long as you just put some love in it and as long as you've like, you know, save 50% of it for, for later on the next year, the next year, the next year, that that's how you make a, a, a beautiful home, you know? So for my place, it, it, it I sort of went guns blazing and now I'm kind of like ripping some stuff out and changing some colors. <laughs> changing and, it up. You know, yep. Everything you like tell your clients, don't do this. I basically did. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But, but it looked cool. It all <laughs> so you did uh, do as they say, not as I do, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I did it. I, I personally did it all. Like, you know, I like hired the project manager, the contractor, contracts, everything. Halfway through, went everyone off site. We're not doing this. I'm doing it my way, and yeah, everything that you shouldn't do, I did. Wow, <laughs> wow. But you know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, so, uh, are cool you st man. are you still making the custom bikes? Yeah, man. We we um, we still make bikes. We do about oh God. We do about maybe five a year. They wow, take so cool. They take a lot of time. This bo this uh, this you know? Bone Shaker seventy nine man, I think my name might be on one of those soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the market a for a bobber. That's a, that's a super cool bike. Actually, that is, you know, when I was making bikes, there's only a few of my bikes on the site. But when 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 before I made products and making bikes, my big thing was like cut and shutting bikes. So you take that like, front end of a Japanese race bike yep. and back end of a Harley. And actually, that that Bone Shaker seventy nine was kind of like my style. And I made a bunch of those things, and uh, I hope they're still in one piece. And <laughs> so, shut, it's so, not a great idea with bikes. So, do you ride yeah, one yeah. of your bikes as a daily rider, or are you on something a more Hell manufactured? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, no. I mean, I, I do, but normally those uh, those custom bikes you can sit on for about thirty minutes, and yeah. then your your ass is is slapping you around the face. But <laughs> but I, I ride. Um, you know what I mean? They've got no suspension. A hundred percent. I ride a stock Ducati actually now. And actually we're doing a, 
we're doing a collaboration with Ducati soon, which will be really exciting. Oh. We've been doing a, a, a couple of their bikes and stuff. So, wow. so we, we, we are still in the motorbike world. You know, we kind of love it. I think as a, as a brand growing up, we're kind of like veering a bit more towards fashion now when we're kind of, you know, trying to be culturally relevant. And, and I think for me, it's quite important when you do have a little bit of a spotlight that you kind of like don't just talk about products and sell right. stuff, but kind of like pin your heart on something and talk about important issues and get debate going. So I kind of like rant a little bit around that, and I'm probably ranting on this as well, but I think it's really important. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's what it's for. So, uh, well, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the Ducati thing um, is nearing completion, please give me a heads up. Let me know, because if you yeah, guys are going to have a, an event out your way, I would I would come out in a heartbeat to, to come yeah. meet you and shake hands and, and hang out with some Sounds motorbikes great. and have a beer. Yeah, sounds really cool. I think, For um, sure. Yeah, I think it sounds really cool. Awesome, man. Well, listen, it was a blast talking with you. Guys, um, all of Massimo's social stuff will be posted in the show notes as always. The website will be posted there. Highly recommend you check out their light fixtures, their bulbs, their, their hardware. It is, I mean, aside from looking absolutely incredible and being very, very unique, it is top quality stuff it's all solid machined metals very very cool massimo can't thank you enough for Lovely. the time yeah, the, massimo, uh, thank, thank you guys you. thank you very much the, the yeah. episode of the build up with you guys in it'll be uh will be out before you know it probably be out by the time this podcast airs so hopefully everybody's cool. enjoying that as well guys this was another episode of home with the cousins thanks for hanging with us Hey guys, real quick before you go, we just wanted to say thanks for listening to the show this week. And if you have a second, please subscribe on the Apple Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. And share the show with your friends so we can keep growing this great community. Remember to check out homewiththecousins.com to read our show notes from this episode, see past episodes, download our free renovation document package, or just to send us a note. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Carino Anthony and at Culinary John. Our show is produced and edited by yours truly, with original music intro and outro created by Steve and Joseph Padula. I'm Anthony Carino, and thanks for listening. Thank you.